Ooh. Today we're gonna to be looking at all things nails. Nail care, nail polish, nail polish remover, and what products are right for you. I'm Jessica, your unofficial but official beauty expert with my best friends, my beauty microscope, and together we will create science. Okay, let's take a look at my bare nails under the microscope. There's glitter. There's still glitter from the last video. Is my finger sweating? I just saw glistening. Okay, everyone relax. These two little things that look like fish scales that you see and a lot of this stuff right here, these are hangnails. Hangnails are loose skin caused by trauma around the nail. Nail biting, doing a lot of physical labor with your hands. My uh, hangnails are caused from gardening because I love plants. See? Sweat, what is that, sweat? Look at that, do you see it? What is that? You know what, you're getting a little embarrassed. It's okay, I love you no matter what you look like. Up next, we're gonna do a little bit of nail maintenance. The purpose of your cuticle is to create a seal between the nail plate and the rest of your skin. That seal keeps out microorganisms, funguses, and viruses. We're gonna start with pushing back one of my cuticles. I just let the weight of my hand glide the cuticle back. And wherever it stops, I just let it stop. That's probably really horrifying to see up close. Okay, now I'm gonna trim a little bit of my cuticle, but before I do that, I just wanna say, the more you trim, the more your cuticle will grow. Your body wants there to be a cuticle, so it's going to make it grow more and more and more the more you cut it back. There we go. Look at that little piece of cuticle. That's so gross. <laughs> wow, I feel like I'm beheading my friends. I like the bare nail pushed. It looks more moisturized, it looks healthier. The trimmed actually kind of looks like I caused a little bit of trauma on my nail. Moving on to bitten versus cut nails. And biting your nails includes not just the nail plate, but also the skin around your nails. By biting your nails, you're causing tiny, fissures in your skin that allow microorganisms in. That being said, I do wanna see what a bitten nail looks like under the microscope. I literally cannot bite because mine are too strong. So we had somebody else come in and bite their nail. Who that nail? Looking at this, you can see the jagged edge and another thing that happens when you bite your nails, because it's uneven, that leads you to continue to bite, to try and even out the nail. Let's move on to trimming. Let's do it. Side, side, top. Let's look under the microscope. You guys can see here that it's a lot smoother than the bit nail, but you still have those two points of raggedness from the edge of the clipper. So we're gonna move on to filing. We're gonna start with your standard drugstore nail file, and then we're also gonna try out a glass one. Drugstore, and we're gonna do it under the microscope. As you guys can see, as I file, I file in one direction. You don't wanna saw back and forth because that can further damage your nail. You can see the black are the little pieces of the emery board, which leads me to my next fact. Emery boards sometimes are made of cardboard or styrofoam. They're porous, so sometimes bacteria can get in them and they're not the most sanitary thing to use. Now we have the glass file, which we're gonna check out underneath the microscope. Okay, now we're gonna file this down. And this is a really fine file, so you're not gonna see as many particles flying around as we did with the last file. It's like powder. Looking at both of the nails, I can see the coarser file, there's way more debris. Honestly, not as smooth of an edge as the glass file gives you, and the particles are much finer with the glass file. Once you put it in glide, your nail kind of does all the work for you. Hydration is, is very important creating science. Next, we're gonna try on some nail polish. First, I'm gonna put on base coat so my nails do not stain. Done. 
we are gonna go with the affordable brand first. It's kind of um, a streaky formula. I also love to paint my whole finger because I am a slob and then I like to go in with nail polish remover and then clean up my nail. That's how I paint my nails. That's the truth. That's who I am. It's a safe space. It's very shiny. You can see some of the streaks. It almost looks like there's texture on my nail, but that's really just the streaks. Okay, I'm gonna put on another layer and see if that helps. I'm gonna do it really quickly. It's a little bit better, more shiny. So the key is two coats. Now we're gonna do the expensive nail. This one is a much runnier formula, no streaks. And because we had a finer brush, it was a lot easier to not paint on the sides. It's much cleaner edges. Thinner formula, but a better color payoff, which is wild. I think both of them are really great. The more affordable one dries faster, but you need two coats to get that desired color payoff. And the more expensive one gives you a really nice shine and a great color payoff with just one coat. Oh, sorry. She gets very hot. Oh, I Oh my God, all those speeds, that's ridiculous. We're gonna do some fun nail art. First thing I'm gonna check out is this crackle polish. And we're gonna watch it dry under the microscope. Ooh. Oh no. Oh no, that's uh, disgusting. Looks like rotting flesh. I'm not gonna say his name because brand, but it's that guy's face. And you know what guy I'm talking about, it's that guy's face. So this has more alcohol in the formula, causing it to dry and separate. Next, stickers. No, roses. <gasps> Cacti. Oh, little plants. Oh my God. I gotta do the plants. Oh my goodness, this one looks like she's crying. I get it, so I'm gonna use her. Here she comes. Oh wow, I'm having the time of my life. Oh no. I just folded her in half on accident. Hi. Oh my goodness. Look. Look at the little cacti. And, and to keep the stickers on, you can just put a top coat on to seal it. Huh. I'm not gonna be able to do it. Now to the fun section. <laughs> Those are special effects. We're gonna try out two nail products. One of them is like a matte coat, and then we're gonna try another nail polish that's a fun, glittery, holographic polish. So this is a top coat that mattifies. It's gonna take out all of the shine. So I only painted half the nail. You can see this looks a shade lighter, almost pink-like, versus the high shine of the red. If we could get even closer on a super, super, super microscopic level, we wouldn't see a flat, smooth, shiny surface. We would see tiny little divots, right? Because there's texture or powder on top that makes it matte. Now, we're gonna try the fun, shiny, holographic nail polish. I'm really excited for this one. Fun! Oh, yes, come through, party. Actually, you can see a little bit of my nail through the nail polish. I wanna say it's like a more natural look, but it's not. <laughs> I already told you about how I do, how I paint. I just paint the whole finger girl. Paint the whole finger girl, let it dry. And you know what? I'm telling you that you go back with nail polish remover and clean it up, but I just take a shower and it peels off in the shower, okay? Just paint your whole finger, let it dry, and then take a shower. Oh my God, I'm just saying it's a safe space for us out here who are not like amazing nail techs, okay? I feel you, I feel you. This nail polish has tiny little particles made of silica, which are suspended in the polish and act as like little mirrors that make all the glitter and all the shine and all the colors. They're both fun finishes, but I think we all know glitter is where it's at. And glitter is not just a look, it's a feeling. Okay, on to some longer lasting options. We're going to do gel and then we're gonna try dip. Not the tobacco, 
Gel cures with a UV or an LED light, but today we're gonna use a UV light. So I'm gonna put on some sunscreen. You wanna aim for SPF 30 or higher because this is a UV light, just like the ones they use in tanning beds. We're going to start with the foundation. This smells terrible. Oh my gosh. Between every single layer, we have to cure and set the product. I put on the foundation and now we're gonna press you set it and you forget it, like a rotisserie chicken. Okay, this is all set. Now we're gonna add our color. It looks a little bumpy. Now we're gonna set in the mess <laughs> with our top coat. Oh, I don't know, it might have fixed it. <laughs> Heard that feedback. Okay, so it's not totally fixed. She's done. So the little bubbles are from the different stages of curing, and these are trapped air bubbles because they dried so fast. I put it on pretty thick. That's okay. Thank you. You know, sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader. Last but not least, we're gonna try dip powder. So the key with this first step is to make sure not to get any of it on your skin. Oh, it looks like painting like dried super glue onto my nails. Moving on, step two, nail base. Siri, am I messing up? Yes, you are. Okay, Dip. I'm gonna take a little paintbrush. In a salon, you wanna make sure that this dip powder is getting dusted onto your nail because if you're dipping it into a container, that means they're reusing the powder and that is not sanitary. Okay, step three. This is gonna be our layering layer. This is a process. This is the final layer before we dip into the white and seal in the look. Ooh. It's almost like it's melting the powder. Now that that stress is over, we're going to dip into the white. My whole finger is purple. <laughs> Definitely don't book me to do your nails because we'll both have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Who would ever want to do this on their own without friends? Don't do this alone. Don't do this unattended. Don't do this without a strong support system around you. All right, we're putting on another layer to seal it off. It's all coming together beautifully. <laughs> now I'm gonna let it dry and wait a minute before we add the gel activator. This would be a really great time to cry because you've held it in for the whole process and it's almost done. I also have a new appreciation for every nail tech, like pay your nail techs and tip them. I don't know what this is doing besides reminding me that what I did was bad. <laughs> um, let's look at it under the microscope. <laughs> This looks like a preschool finger painting. <laughs> I'm gonna take you through what we're seeing, which is honestly a portrait of a nervous breakdown. Obviously it's supposed to be a lot smoother. The color's really pretty. <laughs> it's a pretty color. <sighs> I mean, girl, what you want me to say? You really, you're really gonna do me like this? <laughs> um, so what you see on the cuticle is a lot of extra product. You know what, you can just take a shower. If you just take it. <laughs> Here we're gonna show a professional picture. Tink, tink. So comparing the two, I did a much better job with the gel. It's smooth, it's shiny, there are a little bit of air bubbles, but who cares? Uh, the dip is rough. I'm just curious about. Oh my God. I'm gonna remove the traditional nail polish with acetone nail polish remover and non-acetone nail polish remover. First we have acetone. Whoa, that came off super fast. So not only is it removing the nail polish, it's also removing all of the like natural oils and the cuticle oils and all that stuff we placed on the nail when we were prepping it. As you can see, I'm very dry now. You can basically see my fingerprint. Yeah, she's parched. 
So I'm expecting because this is a non-acetone nail polish remover for it to not be as successful and like stripping with the first coat. That actually came off faster than the acetone. Let's see if it will take the sticker off. I've got to scrub it a little bit, but yeah, it took it right off. And it smells really good. It doesn't smell like death. Oh. My nail is still a little stripped, a little dry, but you can see it's not nearly, especially like on the fingerprint, it's not nearly as dry as the acetone. But the acetone is necessary for removing specialty polish like gel polish and dip polish, which we're gonna do next. We're gonna take out our foils, which you can buy from a store pre-made with the foil and the cotton pad, or you can take cotton swabs at home, wrap in tin foil. And we're gonna use our pure acetone. These have to be removed with acetone. Acetone is really drying. We're gonna wrap my whole finger in acetone, therefore my whole finger might be a little bit dry. So that might be another reason why maybe gel and dip polish are not right for you. I kinda wanna be super generous. Keeping gel nail polish on your nails for a long time isn't necessarily bad. What is damaging is if you pick or peel off the polish. When you do that, you're ripping the first layer of your nail off and that is not okay. Okay, let's take a look. You can see the gel is peeling off. Let's see what's going on with this dip. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wear this home. It's still there. I'm gonna see if I, if I press and rub, it's coming off. It's like I have slime and, and super glue on my nail. Okay, let's take a look under the microscope. Okay, we can still see like the powder, basically that super glue layer that we had and a little bit of the pigment dust is still on the nail. And here's where we move the gel. Ooh, we got a little bit of gel underneath the nail. With the gel, all of it's removed, but you can still see some places where it's fully intact, like underneath my nail. The gel was way easier to take off and the dip is still on my finger. Okay guys, I hope you had a wonderful time. I know I did, maybe a little too much fun. I also hope you learned something and found some new products you wanted to give a try. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Aw, thanks guys.